What's up? So I wanted to start by saying thank you so much for all of the kind comments on my last video. It kind of blew up, which I really didn't expect. So thank you for that. A bunch of people were asking what browser I'm using. So the short answer is I'm using Cute Browser. The long answer is this video. So Cute Browser, if you've never seen it before, is a keyboard centric browser, meaning the majority of your navigation is meant to be done with keybinds. So by default, it uses Vim key binding. So J, K, uh, Shift J and Shift K to go back and forth in tabs. I could directly open a URL or I could use a shortcut to go to a specific site. So for example, I could search ArchWiki and, you know, cute browser like that. Um, or I could go, you know, Arch uh, Package Cute Browser, and these are both, you know, shortcuts that I've actually defined. And you could set up this sort of a shortcut for any site that supports that sort of querying. Um, Shift H is going to take me backwards, but I could change all of the keybinds to whatever I wanted. You can also even record macros for keybinds if you wanted to do that. And you have full customization over the UI here, which, I mean, as you can see is, you know, it's pretty minimal. Um, but, you know, I could make it even more minimal. I could uh, move the tabs to be vertical there if I wanted to do that. I could hide the status bar on the bottom. I could hide the tabs if I wanted to hide the tabs, all of that sort of stuff. And of course, all the colors, fonts, etc. completely customizable. You can do your configuration directly in the browser with just set there, uh, just colon set, and then that's going to bring up this little configuration menu that actually has info on each of these config settings. So you could, you know, click on it, see the info, and it's also got the value tab there, the setting tab here. Um, but I prefer to just configure it directly in config.py since this allows you to actually have Python scripting directly in your configuration, which is one of the cool features of Cute Browser since it's in Python. You can actually just configure directly in Python with Python scripting. Um, and as you can see, literally all of these colors can be set. This is just using X resources colors. Um, the last two characters on these hex codes are for transparency. So that's what's allowing for the transparent tabs here. And uh, I don't know, jury is still out on whether I like the transparent tabs or not, but I figured like, since it's possible, I should just turn it on for the video since why not, right? Um, anyways, we've also got, you know, pretty much all of the settings you would expect are available, but just a bunch more than what you would expect as well. Um, yeah, here's where I have the little bangs set up for the search ends and you could, you could put whatever you want here, pretty much any site that's going to support searching, you could set up. Um, I've got some key binding changes. Everything else is going to be the defaults and you actually have this huge defaults file that's going to have explanation on every single setting. Um, as well if you want to just be doing everything from files. So you could read through this file to get explanation on like literally every setting. It's like 4,000 lines, the majority of which is comments. Um, don't worry, you don't need to configure all of that. Um, my configuration here is only like 142 lines and the majority of that was like color settings. So you don't need to do too much configuration. Um, there is a default dark mode available. You could set a keybind to toggle it on and off if you wanted to do that. There's a few different algorithms available for it, but with the one I'm using, um, for example, example, this QT web engine page is, you know, it's a white background and then now it's dark gray with the dark mode on. So I think it works pretty well. Um, and this de default dark mode is pretty nice, but you could uh, have, you know, a different sort of algorithm if you wanted a different kind of dark mode calculation. So Qt Web Engine, this is what Qt Browser is actually based on. And Qt Web Engine is essentially just Chromium with all of the Google Phone Home stuff removed from it. So essentially the best version of Chromium you could get. And Chromium, as everybody likes to say, is like super fast. And, you know, I think Qt Web Engine um, as a you know, using code from Chromium, but removing the extra Google junk from it, I think it's a pretty good browser engine. Um, and you might also be wondering if Python is actually fast enough for a browser. And the answer to that directly in the FAQ is that the majority of the heavy listing is done by Qt Web Engine, which is just in C++, which means that, you know, Python being what Qt Browser is coded in is not the true browser backend. The browser backend is C++. So that's sort of the speed question. And just anecdotally, I would say Qt Browser is as fast as Firefox, just in my own, you know, personal experience. I would say it's very snappy. Um, but the three most important questions, I think, for a browser are security, privacy, and ad blocking. And I put ad blocking in that sort of group because ad blocking is pretty much needed on modern web because it kind of sucks. So is Qt Browser secure? That's answered directly in the FAQ here. Um, essentially, there have been three security issues caused by Qt Browser in almost six years, which were handled promptly, um, which is pretty much all you can ask of a browser. 
All major browsers have security issues, all browsers really. Um, and as long as they're handled, you know, quickly and promptly and fixed, then I think it's fine. I mean, if you look at, you know, Firefox or Chrome, they've had their share of zero days. So it's just a question of, are those issues getting handled quickly? And it seems like Cute Browser is doing a good job of that. So in terms of privacy, and by privacy, I mean stuff like built-in anti-fingerprinting, anti-tracking, that sort of stuff. No, it doesn't have built-in anti-fingerprinting, anti-tracking, but it does have the basic settings you would expect in terms of like toggling off cookies or toggling off JavaScript, um, all of which you can bind up with keybinds if you want to bind that up to keybinds to toggle it on and off quickly. A lot of the time people use web extensions in order to get, you know, anti-fingerprinting sort of stuff. Um, you know, often on Firefox, you have like a, a bunch of extensions that everybody groups together to get, you know, your, your privacy settings there. Um, Cute Browser does not have any sort of an extensions library, meaning if you want that sort of functionality from extensions, you're going to have to make user scripts yourself, either for Grease Monkey or you could also have like direct shell scripts, that sort of stuff. Um, so my take on the sort of privacy with Cute Browser, um, as somebody who does care about privacy, is that it's passable um, between the built in settings and some extra uh, Grease Monkey user scripts. I think it is a passable privacy experience, um, but I don't think it's absolutely perfect. If you wanted, you know, a true hardened privacy browser, I would go with LibreWolf. I think LibreWolf is not only the best Firefox fork, but probably the best mainstream browser available. Um, obviously, you know, if you were super, super serious about privacy, you might want to like go with Tor or something like that. But you know, if you are very serious about privacy and want to be using just a mainstream clear web browser, LibreWolf is probably the answer. Uh, but just, you know, in my own experience as somebody who does care about privacy, I think Cute Browser is passable for my daily use. I will say I am relatively careful about not going going to like sketchy websites. So that's sort of how I would answer the privacy question. In terms of ad blocking, Cute Browser does have built in ad blocking. You can actually just load with ad block update and that's gonna go ahead and read hosts that are built in. Um, there is more ad blocking stuff to talk about, but because this is YouTube, I can't really go over a bunch of it without risking the video getting taken down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add like a paragraph in my config talking about how to do it. So that way you can learn how to do it, but I'm not gonna like risk the video like getting completely removed because I talked about it. Unfortunately, that's the world we live in, but yeah, that's pretty much what I'm gonna say about that. Um, an extension that a lot of people like to use for browsers, which since, you know, Cute Browser doesn't have ex access to an extensions library, you can't get, um, is Stylus for user styles. But luckily you can do custom CSS on websites. So I pulled up uh, my YouTube video here to just kind of show my, uh, I don't know, kind of janky little YouTube custom CSS that I worked on a bit, um, which I will stick it on my GitHub uh, with my config if you wanted to use it. I mean, it's nothing crazy, but just sort of to demonstrate, yes, you can do some custom CSS tweaking if you want to do that. Uh, you know, just kind of making the UI a little bit more minimal and stuff, which I, I kind of like. Um, so that's custom CSS, which you can do if you want to do that. Um, in terms of other extensions, you know, replicating the functionality of a lot of the extensions that people rely on. In terms of your password managers, you could definitely set that up with some of the user scripts here. Um, there's plenty of other user scripts you can look through as well. These are all actually on the official repo here. Or you could look through, you know, other random people's user scripts, obviously just read it and make sure you understand what it's doing before you run it. Um, and in my, you know, personal use here, I've been able to replace all of the extensions that I previously relied on when using, you know, a mainstream browser. So um, in my experience, Cute Browser really does work um, in terms of, you know, having all of the functionality I need while still having all of this extra customization and the ability to kind of do it yourself. I think that's kind of the main appeal of Cute Browser. You know, it's a super DIY browser. You're going to be doing all of this configuration and you're going to be writing your own user scripts and all that sort of stuff, which makes it really fun if that's something you enjoy doing. Um, but if you, you know, don't want to be doing all of that configuration, you just want a browser that works, I would say LibreWolf is probably the best mainstream browser to go with. You know, it's very privacy hardened out of the box and you're still going to have access to all of that Firefox extensions library if you want to be using it. Um, so I don't know. That's my take on browsers. Um, hopefully somebody here found this video useful. Hopefully somebody will go enjoy cute browser now. Uh, anyways, I'll see you next time. Peace.